What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Monday. Let's kick it off right. Get this week started. We are getting so close to football season, man. Can almost taste it. Oh, that's not football season. That's something else. Ooh, gross. Brush your teeth. All right. So, uh, you know what to do. Hit like, subscribe. I say it every day, but uh, I don't get tired of it. I'm sure you do, but... Um, Let's get ready for this Buckeye football season. We had the media talking to all the players and coaches last week. Just about. I think they got Larry Johnson coming up and then the safeties with Matt Guerrero. So right now, I got you, I got you with the receiver group and Heartline. Um, they met with some of the reporters last week. And um, let's get into it. Brian Hartline on Ohio State secondary. Um, He said this is the best DB room in depth and and high-end talent that he's seen since he's been there. Uh, So that's, what, 2018, I think? Uh, Hartline said the competition against the uh, defensive backs and receivers is critical for his position group. He said with the the DBs you go against every day and the guys in in your room, you can't have a bad day as a receiver. he talked about Carnell Tate. He said they can play Carnell anywhere on the field. His ability to learn the details of the offense really stands out to, to Hartline. Um, if he makes a mistake, he'll never make it again. So he instantly corrects it. Uh, he's very, very, very clean from a mechanics and footwork standpoint. And he probably has some of the toughest hands on the team when catching the ball in traffic. So it doesn't matter really where you put Carnell. He's going to take care of his job and and be a competitive advantage. Um, On what stood out about Brandon Ennis this summer, uh, Hartline said uh, the way he carried himself and the way he was a leader. And once he bounced back from the injury in spring, uh, he impressed his teammates throughout the summer. Uh, He was a guy that the leaders wanted to vote on to the leadership council. So he earned all that without even playing football. Uh, Hartline said that this time of year is about striking a balance between installing the offense and working on fundamentals. Uh, Next up, Emeka. Emeka Egbuka says uh, on where he's seen Jeremiah Smith grow this preseason, quote, his mentality, uh, his ability to take the good with the bad and learn the playbook and grow in his, his knowledge of the game. Mecca said uh, uh, on Ohio State becoming a run-first offense this year, uh, he said a run-first offense just opens up big lanes for the passes. Uh, Mecca said it's less about who gets the touches and more about how they can capitalize on the opportunities. Um, he said uh, we have the best backfield in the, in the country. We have the best receiver unit in the country. And so he feels really good about if you want to run the ball first, that's fine. It's just going to open up the the, the passing game. Uh, Mecca talked about Mylon Graham. Uh, Graham has gotten comparisons to Garrett Wilson. Pretty lofty for a guy that's just been on campus for a couple months. Um, Mecca said he is definitely fluid about the way he moves. You can see it in his routes and his releases. It's just about bringing him along because he just got here. Uh, Mecca on Will Howard. Mecca said he's kind of like a field general general out there. He has tremendous confidence in his ability, so that bleeds out into the entire offense, and we're able to play fast. That's good to hear. Uh, you definitely don't want to be playing in mud. Um, Carnell Tate, he had some good stuff t- to say on um, where he improved from year one to year two. He said he's better everywhere. Uh, he's moved around on the field as well. He's been in the slot on the outside. He said he's bigger, faster, and stronger. Uh, On his role in the offense, he said he wants to make plays, have a 1,000 yards receiving, and be that go-to guy. Uh, He talked about uh, uh, Brian Hartline's comments that he has the toughest hands on the team. Tate said uh, it's it's a mental, mental attribute as much as a physical one, just concentration. Catching is a mindset game. Uh, you got to build confidence by catching the ball. Um, he talked about going against one of the best groups of corners in the country. He said it makes them better over overall, all over the field, whether that's inside or outside. 
You said Jordan, IGB, Denzel, Jermaine, they're getting the receivers better each and every day. Um, they've got the best DBs in the country, and he doesn't think there will be a game where they face better DBs. Uh, so Carnell Tate uh, doesn't think – He's being slept on with all the hype around Jeremiah Smith. He just wants to go out and do his thing, and, and you know, the attention will come. Let's move on to Brandon Ennis. Um, <clears throat> he had an interesting quote. He, this guy's a leader. I love this. Love his attitude, his energy, everything about Brandon Ennis. I want to see him on the field. Uh, he said, "Quote after the team up north game last year, just watching the film, I was disgusted with the whole game." Not really with certain plays, but I feel like I can do a lot on the field and bring more intensity to what we're doing. Yeah, he's he's a spark plug. Uh, Ennis says he brings a lot of energy to the team, and he felt the offense last year needed more energy as a whole unit. Uh, he feels he can be a high-energy guy, drive the offense, and drive the team. Uh, Ennis said this spring he was – uh, devoted to getting healthy, being a leader for everyone else around him, and like Jeremiah Smith. And uh, he said he he and Davis and Igbenosin have engaged in uh, friendly trash talk, they call it, uh, almost every day in fall camp so far. And uh, Ennis said the biggest advice uh, he's given to Mylon Graham is to stay in his playbook and continue his progression and daily habits. Now the big man – Mr. All-World, Mr. 305, Jeremiah Smith, uh, he said, quote, uh, it's a blessing, but uh, you don't want the hype to affect you and all this other stuff that's going on around me. I just keep my head down, just find ways to get better each and every day on blocking out. That was Jeremiah blocking out the, the hype around him. Uh, Smith said uh, he's, he was never going to flip away from Ohio State on signing day. He said, I wasn't flipping. I don't know why people made that the same idea as that I was a Buckeye and that's it. Well, you know, who did that. Those Canes fans. Come on. Uh, Smith said he was wowed by the fact that Ohio state fans came to watch his games during his senior year of high school. <laughs> that's yeah. Buckeye fans travel. Um, and Jeremiah said, Will Howard has definitely made a big jump from the beginning of spring. Um, and I don't know why people forget that his, his cousin is Geno Smith, NFL quarterback. So he knows what it means to be a professional. You know, we talked about that. But anyway, um, just a couple quick ones here on Jaden Ballard, Bry Bryson Rogers, and Kojo Antwi. Jaden Ballard says he feels that Coach Hart has a lot of trust in him. Uh, and then Ballard feels his he's improved his consistency and knowledge of the offense. Bryson Rogers, he said he's glad that he uh, – decided to return to Ohio State after entering the, entering the portal back in December. Uh, and Bryson said that Will Howard has shown more composure and he's more comfortable in the offense. Kojo Antwi says that he feels like he had his best camp so far as, as his Buckeye career. He says he understands every player has a different development timetable. Um, Kojo called uh, Jeremiah Smith – a mini Julio in reference to Julio Jones. He said that it feels like any time the ball goes up, it's a 75 25 for Jeremiah. So I believe it. I don't know who's going to out jump him. Seriously, especially a DB. Maybe IGB is the only tall one we have, but yeah, receivers got it going on. Uh, love the energy from Ennis. Jeremiah just keeping his head down, you know, grinding. Carnell has high expectations, feels bigger, faster, stronger, like he said. And uh, I, I don't know why he can't have a thousand yards, honestly. Um, Emeka, obviously the leader of that group and uh, keeping the guys, you know, in, in check. If they ever get a little too wild. So Hartline's got one of his best groups he's, he's ever had, in my opinion. Um, I can't wait to see these guys. And it's just a question of how are they going to rotate in? You know, how often can you get Ennis on the field as your fourth guy? And do you dip in to your fifth and sixth guys ever? I don't know. We'll see. Can you use Jaden Ballard as a deep threat only? So some of the questions for Hardline. But uh, so I got for you today. Talk to you tomorrow. Go Bucks. <laughs>